Aberdeen are up and running in the league after beating St Mirren 4-1 on Saturday. Leighton Clarkson's goal was Aberdeen's 400th league goal against St Mirren. That stat comes courtesy of Andrew Shiny. St Mirren are now winless in their last 14 visits to Pataudry and a very healthy 14,420 of you watched the game on Saturday. It meant that we jumped a number of places up the table from bottom to fifth after Hearts and Hibs drew yesterday. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to the studio here from my base in Germany. This is Ali Beg, ABTV, as we look back on Aberdeen's rather impressive victory against St Mirren on Saturday. If you are watching for the very first time, welcome. I'm absolutely thrilled to have you along. Please feel free to subscribe. Tonight is all about the fans, so we'll be getting your reaction to Aberdeen's win on Saturday, and I've got a couple of other bits and pieces for you as well. But we're going to start with the thoughts from the manager. This is what Jim Goodwin had to say. I want the fans to go home excited, but we shouldn't get carried away. We played 10 men for long periods today, so we should win. But we did play some good, exciting football too, and I was absolutely delighted with that. One of the things that I mentioned on the Big Saturday Football Show uh, on North Sound 1 after Aberdeen's win was the fact that we actually played more positive football than what we did last season. We're already starting to see the glimpses of this positive football that Jim Goodwin has already sort of introduced into our style of play. Last season, we saw too many square passes along the back line and it would eventually end up going backwards, then forwards, then square and square and sit at our centre-back. On Saturday, I really hope you agree with me. Feel free to drop me a note and let me know what you think. Everything was positive. We were always looking to get the ball through the lines, looking to get the ball through the channels and make a positive pass. And I thought that made such a difference feel free to let me know what you think because this show is, after all, all about you guys. Let me just give you the stats from the game on Saturday. So we had 75.1% possession. We had 23 total shots, of which 10 were on target. Kelly Roos didn't have to make any saves in the game. Obviously, he went up against the penalty and nearly saved it. But I think that says a lot about how solid we are currently at the back. We won four corners and we completed 86.2% of passing. So, so many positives to take from that game with four very interesting games coming up, which I discussed with Gavin from my pals at ABZ Podcast, who is, I'm sure you're aware, a very prominent on Twitter and social media these days. They have fantastic interviews with ex-players. And they're really, really good on Twitter. They have some very interesting thoughts. Get online with them. See what they have to say. But Gavin and I had a little chat earlier today about Saturday's win. Here he is. Hi, Gavin. Good to see you. Thank you for jumping on, as always. OK, give us your initial thoughts after that rather nice win on Saturday. Rather nice is the exact words I'd use. There's not many results from last year at Pataudry that I want to be mirrored into this season, but a 4-1 scudding of Sitmirren, I'll take that. I mean, what a difference a few months makes, eh? I know, it's um, the the style of play. You know, last season we discussed this square, square, back, forward, square, square, back. On Saturday, I think I only saw two or three examples of that. We were always looking to get on the front foot and make a positive pass forward uh -huh. which was so refreshing do you agree yeah absolutely i mean um i know my demographics in our podcast but i link it to, to the simpsons you know when it's they bring soccer it's like pass back to wing center holds it holds it holds it that's yeah. what we were like last year yeah. this year we're so much more dynamic and so much pace and athleticism through the team and yeah like you say it's a difference having players like liam scales that can make those those passes through the lines from deep i mean it's it's, it's just as I said, it's night and day on the pitch. 
and it's night and day in the stands as well. It's just such a much better club to be around right now. Yeah, obviously, I'm watching it from afar. I'm watching it from foreign shores, but you can you can hear the atmosphere through the red TV coverage, and it's quite obvious that the place was buzzing. Let's say the the roar that greeted half time is like nothing that I've heard in quite a while. I've got to be honest. I thought you were going to say the roar that greeted Declan Gallagher's red card. <laughs> um, I was involved in that, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it all get, it gets topped off. It's nice to on the kick when you get a new lad in, you know, 20 years old, been in the club for literally like less than half a day and you score a worldie like that. Yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah. what better way to round off a first half. Yeah, I agree. The atmosphere is just completely different and it's all for the better. Okay. The only downside for me personally was the injury to Hayden Colson. Now, from what I can see at the time of us recording this, I can't see anything official from the club. But reading the manager's post-match interview, he said that they think it could be ligament damage. Yeah. So um, if he's going to be out for a number of weeks, Jack McKenzie's still going to be missing. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen in that position, do you think? See, the thing is, so you see, like, so McKenzie's still about a month away from fitness and then he basically missed the key part of preseason, so he's then got to get up, up to speed from there yeah. talking maybe another month after that we said I don't want to see Johnny Hayes left back again um, he'll defend all day from a wide position but I want Johnny Hayes to be up in the attacking area so that he can make full advantage of his pace Yeah, if we turn the ball over for example um, how funny would it be if after all this summer and Jim Goodwin's put himself on the line with a section of our support let's say with the loan signing of Liam Scales because he's the optimum left-sided centre-back. He was great at left-back against yeah. Zimmern. He is yeah. such a good footballer. So how funny it will be if he goes to left-back, McCrory drops into centre-back again after we thought that experiment was over. And then how do you drop Leighton Clarkson after that performance? Yeah, in because, Ramadani? Because Connor's still to come back in. So how's he going to get back in? This is it, because like Ramadani, he's, by the way, we on the podcast, we love Ramadani already. Yeah. He yeah. is that solid 7 out of 10 player we've needed for quite some time, and he's got such experience, such quality. But yeah, Connor Barandor, how do you fit him in the team? <laughs> but uh, as we said, though, these are nice problems to have, aren't they, in yeah. comparison to last year? Yeah, absolutely. We're talking about, how, how can I put it? Positive negatives, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, how do you fit all the really good players into the eleven? Um, it'll be interesting. I mean, it depends because I think Jim Goodwin said Hayden Colson's going for his MRI. Well, I should have had it by now, I guess. Yeah. If it's really serious, I'm not sure I can, personally speaking, say that I would depend on Jack McKenzie because of his injury record since he's joined the first team. So it's interesting. Do do we look to get someone else in? I'm not sure. Um, all I know is, yeah, um, Hayes, not a left back. Yeah, we've got some very good players, though. So there are solutions, but it's just how, how do you optimise what we have? Okay, here's here's something just for argument's sake. Could Leighton Clarkson play at left back? Him, he gets forward, Johnny covers, and bring Connor in. Is that a way that we could fit Connor in? Or do we want Leighton to play in midfield? I mean, uh, based on the in very impressive 75 minutes I saw from Leighton Clarkson, I think he needs to be in centre midfield all day. Um, I'd be concerned physically that he could be exposed. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I doubt he's ever played left back. It would be a very, what's the term? Square peg, round yeah. hole kind of solution. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of in a shame a way that Mason Hancock's left. Yeah. That could have been an obvious solution there. Yes. Yes. Good show. Didn't think of that. Uh, good show. Yeah. I I do wonder because if, if it's the case that Hayden Colson's up for months, do you just could cut your they, losses and say the loan is done and we look yeah. elsewhere? Could they recall him from loan? I'm not sure if they can because I don't I don't know the terms of the deal. So maybe they could recall him. Who knows? It's Motherwell at home next week and then yeah. St. Johnston. Johnston. And then remind me. Livingston. Livingston and then Ross County away. Okay, I think if you, if Aberdeen want to achieve what we want to achieve, which in my mind is third place at a minimum, we need to be winning these games. Um, 
10 points from 12 is where I'd be going okay. at the absolute minimum for there. Um, Motherwell are in not good shape at all right now. Mm. Um, mm. It'll be interesting to see if they have got a new manager in by the time we come around to playing them. Just saying, Mark McGee is still available. Um, St. Johnston, yeah, not great shakes. And Livingston are difficult, we know that. And then mm. Ross County, they caused us problems last year. But it's going to be, if you look at St. Mirren as being like the beginning of getting a sense of where we are as a team in comparison to last year, it was made easier, of course, by Declan Gallagher getting sent sure. off. Sure. But we were really good. And a lot of our like attacking players came to the floor. I thought Vinny Bajowin had his best game of the season so far. Miofsky looks dangerous. Duke off the bench. That guy's going to be a cult hero. I've got that mm. sense already. Mm. Um, I've got a really good feeling. I know we should temper our expectations because in the back of my mind, like Hecken is still there. Sure. And Me false too. dawns are, you know, yeah. a reality in football. But I've just got a sense that we've built something really good. And we had the pleasure of um being in the company of the manager for a few minutes uh, last week. Okay. And, you know, if you had any doubt or any sense of, I'm not sure about this guy, being in his company for a few minutes, that guy makes you a believer. And I get the impression that's what he's done to the dressing room as well. So Yeah. Well, I, Gavin, it's great to have you on. I've, I've heard nothing but great things about the manager, what he's, he's implementing in the football club, what he's doing, the new discipline, all these sort of codes, everything. I, I, I have to say, I've been hugely impressed and long may it continue. Mate, thank you. Lovely to see you as always. Thanks for jumping on. Keep up the great work on the podcast. Thank you, Alec. I'll see Bye, you mate. Time. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Gavin. As always, a couple of newspaper headlines that sort of caught my attention while skipping through social media today. Aberdeen skipper Anthony Stewart looks to make Pataudry a fortress following St Mirren's win and there's a really good story in the Scotsman. Jim Goodwin has message for Aberdeen fans despite 4-1 win over St Mirren we should be winning that game. He's urging us not to basically get carried away which I thought was rather interesting. Uh, guys thank you for getting in touch on YouTube. Just let me read a couple of notes that have come in here. Uh, one from Noel Blaha more positive football. We're attacking with a purpose. It's great to see. Scott W. Hi, Scott. Goodwin has us heading in the right direction. It's still a work in progress, but the signs are very encouraging for the season ahead. We'll certainly win far more than we lose. And Kaiser. Hi, Kaiser. A lot mayor options up front we certainly do the bench is looking good at the moment isn't it okay let's continue the theme of speaking to you the fans i caught up with charlie ross who lives in wales and this is what charlie had to say about our win against st mary hi charlie it's lovely to see you thank you for jumping on doing? tonight um really nice to meet you um right i'd like to begin by asking you about saturday's result and your thoughts on the performance overall yeah, really good performance. I think um, obviously the goals were hugely pleasing. I think and I think Jim said it. You know, kind of the first five ten minutes, giving sloppy possession away. We need to kind of obviously tighten up a, whip, a wee bit at the back, obviously, and then obviously um, the dream of you know scoring the first goal, and then obviously the dream of Leighton Clarkson coming on and and doing what he did and producing, you know, a man of the match performance, which. I think all of us probably were surprised, and probably himself as well, would have been surprised the way he came on. But you could just see the quality, and Liverpool are all over it today. I was reading even on the Liverpool website, they're all over about his goal uh, at the weekend as well. So it's obviously uh, Madison uh, Eck, I think, as well, which you know made himself a hero straight away. So, But yeah, I think um, we've got a few players, I think, just need to get up to speed. I think Jim said it, you know, uh, Mavonsky, he's going to, just going to get better and better, you know. And, and and the great thing that we've got as well is Ramirez came on. And even though I wouldn't say Christian um, showed obviously a lot up front, but people forget the way he set up the goal uh, mm. for Duke. You know, mm. it was a great pass, great awareness. Um, and obviously really chuffed with the, the, obviously the three points, the four goals. The four goals, I think, are the thing that we, yeah, okay, they went down to 10 men, but I felt even... You know, I thought really Gallagher should have gone with a tackle, if I'm honest. Yeah, me too. Uh, 
you know, I think it was really high. He was off his feet a wee bit. I thought he was very, very lucky. And I think, to be honest, I think that's why he got the second yellow. I think the ref kind of knew, you know, that he could have gone. And, and yeah, because I, I felt a wee bit sorry on the second yellow. But then I think, you know, he should have gone for the red. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Again, you know, he steps up, takes the penalty. He's so confident. You know, he smashes that ball straight in again. It's just great to have a striker like that. But again, we've got Duke on the bench. We've got Ramirez. And I think they'll, I think Christian will stay. And I hope he does because people have got to remember we had a bad season last season and he did tremendous mm. uh, last season. Okay, towards the end of the season, it wasn't great for him. But I thought, you know, we. I, th I think he still deserves to have a go at Aberdeen. Okay, so we've got um, a host of games coming up. Um, before yeah. we get back into sort of the cup campaign. Um, mm. So where are you now in your head? Are you thinking we can get maximum 12 out of 12? Would you settle for 10? Do you think we could drop points? Where are you in your head at the moment? You know, obviously, uh, kind of seeing Motherwell at the weekend as well, they, 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 they didn't have a great game uh, on Saturday. Uh, sorry, it was yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think we can, I think we'll get full points against Motherwell. They still haven't made a decision of a manager there. So, you know, obviously that could play in our hands. And in the next few day games, I would love us to go now on a nice winning streak. We did it in the cup. Uh, yes, okay, against, you know, lesser opposition. But I do feel it doesn't matter. You know, you've still got to get past certain teams. And we know from experience, from days back and when, when we got beat by Stenhouse Muir many, many years ago, that these games can be really, really tough. And, you know, you can't underestimate any, uh, underestimate any team. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, we should be the one winning the game and that's the pressure is on us then. But I think, yeah, the next few games, I think... I think any of us would take 10 points. Mm. If, if you said to Jim Goodwin today, would you take 10 points? He would chop your hand off, I would say, and go, yes. Yeah. But obviously we want to win the games. We want to go on and continue. And the thing that I love about Jim as well, and this is the first time I've had a manager, except probably maybe Derek, but I think it's a manager now that knows there's still loads to do. We're mm. not far from mm. the finish article. He's not coming out and just going, yeah, great game, 4-1, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. He's coming in and saying, look, we won four, four one. There should be more goals. However, we were sloppy and we were, you know, on, on certain on possession, uh, which was not great between kind of uh, Stuart and Scales a little bit sloppy. But again, Liam Scales, it's his first, you know, full game uh, in the Premiership today for us, and uh, it'd be nice to get him maybe in January as a full time uh, man at Pitodri. Yeah, I completely agree. In fact, I couldn't agree more. I, I hope the, the club pull out all the stops to get him signed on a, on a full-time contract with us um, and not on loan anymore. And Charlie, listen, we're done. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed your input tonight. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week and hopefully we will catch up again very soon. Yeah, will do. Take care, Ali. Man. Thanks, mate. Ta -da. Bye. Ta -da, there we are, Charlie Ross. Thank you, Charlie. So that's what we're doing with you guys. So if you want to become part of the show, I'd love to get you on. You are absolutely more than welcome. So just get in touch. Uh, more thoughts on YouTube. Kaiser's come back on, said great through ball. Faye Ramirez. Yes, it certainly was. And we should definitely be getting 12 out of 12 over the next four games. I also completely agree with you. Right. Um, how many of you were at Pataji on Saturday and saw this, the under 15s? This video comes courtesy of Gillian Anderson. So thank you, Gillian, for again allowing me to show these pictures. This was the Mikasa Cup that was played in Norway back in June. And the under-15s won it after a penalty shootout against Red Bull Leipzig. They also beat Liverpool on the way to the final. The lads did a lap of honour. And they received their individual trophies on Saturday in front of the Red Shed. And they thoroughly enjoyed the game from there. Thanks to one of the parents who sent me those photographs. But I'm not allowed to credit them because they don't want to be embarrassed by their son. <laughs> so I know who you are. Thank you for sending those pictures through to me. Okay, just to finish off. I would just like to say a very happy birthday to our former fullback, Ian Hare. Ian is 68 today. You can catch a very interesting read with him over on my blog page. 
Ian played 99 games for Aberdeen between 1973 and 1976 and scored six goals. And the story about sort of almost persuading Willie Miller to stick at it when Willie was thinking about quitting in the early days is fascinating stuff. Ian and Willie actually signed on the same day and were great pals as they came through the ranks at Pataudry. And finally, I would just like to tell you about a very special event coming up next month at Mary Kuta House Hotel. It would be absolutely fantastic to see you down there if you can manage. This is Brunch with Aberdeen legend Eric Black. It's going to be a fabulous morning. Um, the setting, as you know, if you've been to Mary Kuta House Hotel, is absolutely lovely. And I really think it will be a lot of fun. Eric and I are going to chew the fat about his career at Pataudry and then you guys get an opportunity to also ask your questions to him as well. Guys, we are done. Thank you so much again for coming on. Thank you for all the comments on YouTube. Really appreciate your input tonight. Um, it was good, wasn't it? On Saturday. Really enjoyed it. So many positives to take for the game. Motherwell next on Saturday and we'll see you again very soon. Have a lovely week. Take care.